Hey tubers, me again. So today on the bench here, we've got a, a Ryobi backpack blower. It's a Bravo Papa 4-2. There's that, here's what it looks like. Throttle control. It's a homeowner type deal. Nothing, um, whatever. They, definitely not for commercial use. Got all the, the little warnings and stuff on here. But, so, here's what, I mean, I'm just getting started on it. I've just put some gas in there. I don't know if you can see it bouncing around in there. But, let's turn on a light if we can. New, it's a new phone, guys. Let's go like that. Torch on. Let's look right down here. See the see the jets for the for the carburetor. But if you look right here on this side, and then at the very tip of my finger over there on that side, he didn't have the right. Um, what do you call it? He didn't have the right carburetor wrench, like a spline or whatever tool, in order to, to work on this thing. So he did the old trick, you know, where you take a Dremel across, and now you can just use a screwdriver. Well, that in itself, that's not, that's not a bad thing, as far as I'm concerned. But here's, here's what I've noticed so far, is that when I take and I push down on the, the primer bulb, it's already, it's bottomed out. It's trying to... It's, there's no way it's going to suck fuel because if you don't get that little mousy squeak when you're pushing on that primer, first thing you're going to do is like get back behind there and switch those fuel lines because, like I've said before in other videos, the magic happens when the primer is on its release. When it's sucking fuel up, it takes it out of the tank, brings it through the carburetor, and then when you push down... It'll take and dump the excess back over into the tank. So the first thing I got to do here is like we got to take and reverse these lines. He says it's really, really hard to start. I'm like, well, I'm sure if he's just using that choke, you know, I mean that would that would make sense. So before we get involved in too involved and say like, oh, it's a carburetor issue, it's this or that, we got to go through the basics and just get that fuel line um, set back up properly. So I'm going to do that, and then we'll come back, and let's, let's see what's going on. Okay, you guys, so we're back. And you can see this. Everybody knows what that is. It's a metering diaphragm carburetor. Listen. A little crunchy. So I put a new one in. I just keep a hoard of them. Uh... Let's see. So before I take and I put the carburetor back on, I just want to verify the repair. I have extra long, whatever, fuel hoses or whatever like that. So I just want to do a little test to make sure that I'm getting fuel through the carburetor. I know I'm going to have to mess around with the adjustment once it starts running just because that guy... That guy went and he put the, whatever, the Dremel across there, and so he's made adjustments. It could have just been the diaphragm starting to harden up from, from the ethanol, but it is what it is. So, I don't know if we can, I'll try to zoom it in a little bit, watch through the fuel lines, you'll see the air bubbles moving, see them, so, and then, duh. And then over here where the primer is. I don't have that returned to the tank. So, let's see. Okay, so everything is doing what it needs to be doing right now. Um, I did replace the fuel line over here just because I noticed that it when it, whoops, wait a minute, I gotta zoom out. I, I noticed that when he, when he had it pulled out that it was a little bit crushed. So I put a new one in. Where the heck is it? Anyways, 
um, just taking care of all the basics. So like, there's going to be my here's going to be my fuel return right there. There's uh, from the tank out. You got the filter on there. So let's get this thing all hooked back up here, and we'll give it a couple pulls and see what happens. Okay. Okay, guys. So fuel lines are all back in. Sorry about the zoom, but I just want you to be able to to see everything. So this is fuel return. This is fuel out. And it comes in down here. Let's put the torch on. That's what they call it on my phone. Down the bar bottom of the carburetor, that's the fuel line in. Over here, down where we saw the guy had jumbled out the, the things, this is the fuel sucker upper part. That's where it comes through the carburetor. So you can see See the air, the air moving through here, and then back inside the tank. Let's see if we can show that. Get this thing. Wait a minute. Get this thing out of the way. And see it dumping the fuel back in. So now we know that we, we've got everything right. Let's zoom this out. What do you think? Should we try a cold start? I have no idea if it has spark or anything like that. Yeah. But let's just try it and see what happens. Gas lid back on. Because at least we know that it's getting fuel in the carburetor. Might be able to get it to cough. And then we're going to have to mess with the, the adjustment. You notice how far off it is. Set the throttle a little bit. Oh, that's nice. It sets a high idle when you set the choke. Alright, we're looking for a cough. Alright, while I'm looking around for the right size screwdriver, I'm going to shut this off, and then uh, we'll come back, and I'll explain to you what I'm doing as far as uh, the tuning of the carburetor. So, we'll be right back, you guys. Okay, guys, so, I got my little tiny screwdriver. I've set the... Get this thing to focus. This is so much better than my other phone. I can't believe it. So, anyways, I've set the the inside, the one closest to the to the engine. Uh, that one is out one and a half turns, and then the high speed is out one and a half turns. So let's just see if we can get it to run by itself. Okay, if you're in the picture. All right, let's see what happens. There's, there's the choke.
fat on gas, but uh, it starts right up. It idles. You still on? You still watching? It idles. It. I mean, it does what it's supposed to do. I don't know where those screws are. I don't know if he left those with me, but so I. When I'm running, I have my finger over the the filter to hold it on there because I want to assimilate the way to get it to be configured the way that it's going to run when it's being used. So we'll just try it again and see if it start, starts up. Don't. Oh, sorry. That's kind of crazy like sometimes they tell you like pull like five max i don't know am i in the picture yeah i don't know sometimes the directions on the anyways you just prime it choke it pull it till it coughs put the choke on halfway and let it run it says at least 20 seconds like i like 30 seconds to a minute your stuff's gonna last a lot longer but I know it's been a while, guys. I'm going to find the screws on this. For this, give the guy a call. Send it back. Thanks for watching. And I promise I'll start putting out more sooner instead of waiting two months. <laughs> All right. That's it. I'm done. I'm out.